Well, how do there, people in the view of us? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and this morning I've got myself a mug of tea, and today I think I need it. We're going to be going into my first impressions of the No Man's Sky Fractal update. Heck yes, just going to have a little sip of this. Freaking lovely, that. Right, okay, anyway, let's jump on over to my reaction camera so we can take a quick look-see. At the fractal update. So, people in the view of us, when the snowflake emoji dropped, the first thing that came to mind is their fractals, you know? And this fractal map that sits behind the generation of each individual unique snowflake. It's the map of the universe of creation, people. So, as soon as I saw all of that, I got super excited. I was like, right, okay, well, maybe they're going to be using fractal math to generate wilder, cooler landscapes inside of No Man's Sky. A little bit like they were doing with the Super Formula and perhaps in the early footage that they shared out there into the verse of what No Man's Sky would originally look like. I thought this was going to be an engine overhaul for the algorithms that sat behind the worlds that we frequent with inside of game. Or if not, in the worlds that we frequent currently, like all the ones that were undiscovered, because those ones, they could affect those because there's no basis on them because they're undiscovered. So I quite saw it in the realms of feasibility and doability because they know which planets have been altered or got bases on and which ones haven't or I'd like to think they could. So maybe I thought they might introduce a realm of glass and the reason why I thought they might introduce a realm of glass is because we've been having hints of the realm of glass for some time and then we know that it's sort of sentinelized space. Sentinels spawn in from the realm of glass and as they do so they cause these little sort of distortions, ripples like the actual um, backpack trail that I use all the time, the distortion trail or what Whatever. Also, when they bring up the shields on the Sentinels, they're made out of triangles, just like these ones that you see with inside of the title banner here. Yeah, so I kind of thought that maybe we might be able to travel into this realm of glass. I mean, Ariadne's code is even added to the Sentinel pillars in one of the Sentinel updates of February of previous year. So February of previous year, they added in the Sentinel update, they added in that extra bit of lore, they added in the glass, 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 glass statements when you go to stations and you try to override them. And we still haven't got the station override yet, people. So maybe they're holding on to that. But seeing this title, when I saw this title, I got extremely excited because they've actually used the triangles in here for the sentinelized type shields. And I thought, they've only freaking gone and done it. We, should, we might be going into the realm of glass. And I scrolled down and I saw this planet with all this sort of awesome sort of foliage on. And I was like, hold on, that looks like a infested planet, an infested sort of frost biome planet. Have they done something on these sort of infested planets that lets you go into the realm of glass? I got even more excited, people. And I thought, I, I haven't only just gotten got the title right, because I guessed the word fractal within the first five minutes of the freaking snowflake emoji going out on the Twitterverse. And I thought, well, I've only gone and hit the freaking nail on the blinking head. But no, no, I haven't. When you actually scroll down and you go through all these patch notes and you hit on up the trailer, you start to get a different feeling. Let me hit the trailer for you. I need to actually turn this, the sound down, but you get the idea because it tells you up in the top corner of what's going on anyway. Yeah, so high-end VR graphics. We've got new ship, a new ship, pretty darn cool, I suppose, in a roundabout way. There you go, I'll zoom out a little. Utopia Expedition. Yeah, Wonders Catalog. Cool, so a UI change. New options menu, UI change. Okay, accessibility options, UI change and quality of life. New helmet, customization as well as the ship. Robot companion, customization, fluffy dice. Left handed mode, yes, that's quality of life. Planet records, okay, what's been updated there then? VR shield, lovely. Quality of life. And, and you kind of get the general gist that it's VR quality of life updates only, people. So, yeah, it, it's none of the fractal math stuff. And, and it kind of feels that they've used the word fractal, but then not put any substance behind it. The only thing I can think of is fractals are sort of repeating patterns in a roundabout way. And so maybe the repeated screens inside of the VR unit, you know, for stereograms. But that's freaking reaching, mate. That's freaking reaching. That, that, I can't see how fractal 
ties into what's been delivered. I really don't know why they would name the update Fractal if they haven't put in any of the Fractal math or the Fractal algorithm inside of game. And um, yeah, it's, it's left me feeling a little bit miffed, to be honest, people inside of the Viewerverse. It's like the last update that we got was when the Switch launched. Now, when the Switch launched, they brought in a lot of quality of life things. It's now gone over to PlayStation VR 2, and they've brought in a lot of quality of life things. If I had to say what this update has brought into the verse, I would say this is on par with, say, maybe Living Ship of um, you know not last February or the February before but the one before that so we had Sentinel last February the Sen and before that we had companions which gave us all the lovely wonderful pets and things and then before that we had living ship so I would say where I would place this is on par with living ship I wouldn't say it's any better than living ship because living ship delivered in a shed load of lore this one came with a expedition which kind of the living ship law was almost in a sense an expedition of sorts because it took freaking days didn't it with all those timers and things in fact that might have been what gave them the idea to do expeditions who freaking knows but i would say this is on par with uh, living ship if i had to rate this actual update right now i mean i haven't played all the way through the actual expedition and i must say i'm thoroughly enjoying the expedition and do i like the actual ship that we're going to get oh yes i do do i like the helmet that we're going to get heck yes i do it's, it's very star wars isn't it and even that little droid that we've got flying around that could be a little bit bb 8 ish couldn't it in a roundabout way so you know what i I'm really liking the actual cosmetics we've been given, but this is all this update is really. Quality of life, some visual improvements, and then um, some cosmetics. It's another fluffy dice sort of um, update. This is not going to be the update that brings you back into play No Man's Sky time and time again. This hasn't improved the update loop. It hasn't improved any of the loot mechanics, even though now from Waypoint, we've got a shed load of extra slots inside of our technology spaces. It really doesn't make overly too much sense to me at the moment in the direction that Hello Games is going with the actual update. There's nothing really for end game players. They're adding in so much fluffy dice stuff and add-on stuff to things that are already there or new things that don't exist that they've put padding it out a bit. I would say for any new players coming in, the amount of stuff in No Man's Sky right now could be slightly overwhelming. Whereas all the players that have been playing since day one, it kind of feels underwhelming. There just isn't the right balance right now to sustain a healthy community from end to end. For, for first for people jumping in, overwhelming. People that have been here ages, underwhelming. They need to try and bridge that in the next couple of updates. And I'm really quite concerned for Hello Games because as we know, Starfield is on the horizon. Starfield could be coming fairly soon into the PC iteration and world and Xbox. So yeah, I'm a little bit concerned that that's going to pull PlayStation players away from No Man's Sky because there is no content to play in No Man's Sky for the veterans, the people who have been playing it for ages. And even the new players are going to say, oh my god, have you seen Starfield? This is freaking amazing. You know, at the moment I've got all this busy work inside of No Man's Sky and a lot of grind. Well, I might as well be doing that in Starfield, you know, and I, I just I'm just really concerned. I'm really concerned because I, I really thought that Hello Games would have to knock this out to the freaking ballpark in the first quarter of this year, considering that, um, you know, Starfield is supposed to be coming out in the first half of this year. So I feel that Hello Games needs to do more to capture the hearts and mind of the current player base and new players early quarter to early half and um, they're cutting it rather fine. Now, I'm in two minds about this though, because I'm wondering whether Hello Games is now moving their team onto their new ambitious project and leaving just a skeleton work crew on No Man's Sky just to pump out some cosmetics, quality of life stuff, just keep them busy, keep them happy with this, keep them distracted over there, keep them playing, keep new players coming in, hit some sales on, throw it over onto every console we possibly can while we're working on our new IP. And that new IP, I'm hoping, is going to be announced and brought into the verse before Starfield happens or just shortly after. So then there's that new intrigue and okay, look over this way now. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm trying to put a business hat on. I haven't got a business hat. This is about as good as I'm going to get, but I'm not really a business-minded individual. I'm just trying to make sense of the actual update itself and what got delivered into us, people inside of the Viewerverse. Now, if I'm talking sense, let me know inside of the comments. But I feel, I feel partly... I feel a little bit bad because, you know, I got the actual name right, Fractal, and I gave decent, rational, logical explanation behind why I thought Fractal was going to be the update and what that would bring in in the way of algorithms and Fractal math. I mean, you don't have to go too far on Google just to, you know, I mean, type in Snowflake and Fractal. Snowflake and Fractal, and I'll show you what comes up. Let me jump over to my reaction cam yet again, and I'll show you what I saw. So here we go. Chicka boom. And here you've got geometry, nature, pattern, art, math, crystal. Okay, so they're the sort of things that came up when I'd done the search for snowflake and fractal. Yeah, and that's what comes back. So you've got all this lovely stuff. And I mean, let's just jump into freaking images. And, and you're going to see that, you know, it can change a basic triangle into a star, and it can change a star into this, and it can change that into that. And you can apply this math, this generation to anything. So, you know, you add it onto a rock, and it's going to add more lumps to it. You add it to a tree, it's going to add more branches to it. You add it to a leaf, it's going to add more vessels to it you get the idea now hello games have been teasing for many a time that you know their, their game delivers on every atom procedurally generated and to me this felt like it could be a substitute for the super formula because after all it's how a lot of things within inside of our own universe are generated currently through the nature of math and it just made perfect sense. You know, it looks like it was going to be some sort of mathematical update. And when you jump on over to the Hello Games' actual website itself, let me just move myself off the screen so you can see this fully. But if you go under press up here on the top there, so you hit press, this is the press kit area. But if you, fly, if you scroll on down on here, I mean, they've changed this actually. It used to have like a, a long list. But if I hit images right here, it takes us into the images and you you can even see some of the landscapes here with these giant shards sticking out that don't look like they're assets that have been placed. They look like they might be procedurally generated. And it's the same with the backgrounds here inside of this image. You can see all this lovely stuff going on. Here you go. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you. But you can even see this sort of rock over here has got a hole in it where the top of this one's got vegetation on it. They're all different. They're actually procedurally generated through math. And perhaps even fractal math at that, because you can see repeated patterns with subtle differences on them. And that's the sort of variation that I was hoping would be delivered on any of the planets that remain undiscovered. So even when you go up to their videos inside of here, people, they've still got quite a lot of the early sort of videos. And here you go. Let's, let's just hit this one, for example. And I bet we see some of that generation going on in some of the backgrounds in even some of these videos. So let's hit this up. I'm going to mute it. We'll make it a little bit larger on screen as well here, people. Okay. Why is it just a black screen right now? Oh, here we go. We've got something going on. Lovely jubbly. And... Yeah, if I skim this on a little, I bet we'll probably see something in here. Yes, like this planet. You see all these snaky, wavy, davy patterns and these giant freaking balls? That's the sort of thing. They are not procedurally placed assets. They're actually created by algorithms. So to see that inside of their trailers and inside of their videos, that is still not in game. I really feel that Hello Games should be stripping all of these off of their website, including those gnarly pictures, and actually giving real representation of what their game looks like, because this is very misleading. I mean, look at that. It's even got these floating things inside of the ocean there, like lily pads. We don't got that. And there's a a few videos out there with lily pads with loads of vines coming off that are completely different to those. We've got nothing floating in our waters to make them look organically alive. I mean, there's that planet with the freaking sentinel walker walking around and... Yeah, I, I just still feel that they're sort of falling short of what they're promising with inside of their press packs. I mean, this is said to be the game that we purchase, people. It's... it's to me, it's just, it doesn't feel like it's a true representation and when you scroll down, they haven't put on any of their new trailers. None of their new trailers are there, people. None of them. So we're still looking at stuff like this as if to say, well, this is the game that we've purchased. This is what should be 
you know, out there, at the very least have some of this in there when it comes to the worlds that are being generated. The worlds that are generated inside of these videos, even now, you're going to see lush freaking jungles and forests and stuff that we just haven't got. It's like these trees over here. You can see lots of bends and changes to the actual branches and to the procedural generation of them. They look a lot more organically alive. They look more interesting. You're going to spend time there. Look at this building over here. That's not inside of game. All the trees look exactly they look different all of our trees look exactly the same it's not the game we actually invested in this planet's got loads of structures all over it instead of having rocks and stuff look at them freaking stegosaurs and the way they were moving you know it it, it just feels like what we purchased isn't this i mean you saw the trees in the background there every single one was different it would make the game feel like every atom has been procedurally generated every rock every tree every bush Look at that! What, I mean, what the fudge? I mean, that looked like there was some ground turrets or something attacking a low orbit frigate flying in. I mean, yes, we have we have frigates flying in now, but <laughs> you can't attack them or do anything like that. Look at this. That's the statement that I mean there, people, at the end there. You know, every planet, every... every no. No. We've got procedurally placed items using uber noise perlin noise uber noise and um yeah i mean people are going to say that i'm going from the hype train to the hate train right now i mean that's that's a, that's a common phrase that's thrown out there by some of the fanboys that say this happens every update you hype it up you get excited for it and then you slam it there's a reason for that we've been asking for the game that we purchased from seven years ago all the way to now and every update we're like this could be it this is when they're going to deliver in something on par with the super formula and then they go and release an update that's got fractals in the freaking title which to to me screams out math changes algorithm changes variety and then what we got was fluffy dice cosmetics and yes i know it's free I know it's free, but I've used this I've used this analogy before. Okay, so when we pre-ordered the game, we pre-ordered a Ferrari, okay? We got it home, it didn't feel quite right. We opened up the hood, it's got a mini engine inside. Okay? It's got a freaking mini Cooper engine. We go back to the freaking warehouse the, the car lot where we bought it from. We're like, hold on, I bought a Ferrari, it's got a freaking mini engine in it. Oh, okay, well, don't you worry, we'll be right back with you, but for now, take away these lovely alloys. Yeah, okay, fine, okay, brilliant. I've got some new wheels, very nice for a while. And then I go back and I'm like, okay, where's my engine? Okay, well, we haven't got an engine for you this time. This time, what we're going to give you is a giant spoiler to make your car look freaking swanky. Doesn't that look nice? It looks nice, right? It does look nice. Yeah, yeah that looks nice. Thank you very much. Cheers. Ta. We go away, we come back, and you get the idea. Each year, they're going to give us something else, another distraction, another thing. And they're going to say, but well, we've given you all this free stuff now. Go away. Go away. Yeah, you don't need your engine. You don't need your engine. That's a, it's, a, it's a Ferrari, and it's got all this free stuff on it. Free stuff's great, but if it's not what we <laughs> what we saw that's still on your press packs, Hello Games, it's still not the game that was suggested that we was purchasing. Don't... Uh, I don't want to come across as ungrateful because I love all my spoilers and alloys. I really do. But just the main element, the main element of why we got this game was your engine, your procedurally driven engine that was going to deliver on every tree every bush every atom and you know what it's in your freaking videos and it's still on your website so please hello games please make this the year that you add in a variety and diversity to all the planets that remain undiscovered inside of the universe or do something about the end game loop at the very least and add in end game content for people that have been playing since day one where this engine was promised where we can get delivered in some sort of variety and reason to come back and explore exploration was this game's heart its soul and that's slowly disappearing. It really is. And um, I'm, I'm sorry to go off on this, and uh, but I got super excited. And uh, I'd imagine a lot of people did too. And it was logical, reasonable speculation that was made. And to find that 
that can go out through the window now. Speculation and trying to guess what was coming into the verse was one of the most funnest things that I enjoyed doing inside of No Man's Sky. And now I'm hesitant. Now I'm hesitant to do it because it almost feels like Hello Games have trolled us on this update. And I know that's not going to win me much favour, but I'm trying to put this out there in a balanced, reasonable way. And right now I'm finding it very difficult to remain reasonable and savvy minded on this and positive on this the only saving grace is this expedition is freaking awesome the cosmetics that you've delivered in this time are great they're freaking gnarly they're another level i'm surprised you haven't been sued by star wars <laughs> well, yeah, fair play to you but at the same time it's um it's still a far throw away from what was suggested at the GDCs and uh, yesteryear and all of the gameplay trailers that we based our pre-orders off of people. That's where I'm going with this. I mean, you guys that are coming in quite new into game and picking this up for the first time without seeing all of this stuff that's on the press packs, you're probably like, this game is freaking amazing. What's he on about? Yeah, but you know, right back when Hello Games made their own hype, when they actually showed this off and said, this is what you're pre-ordering, this is what you'll be playing. And then what we got was something completely different. I mean, and we stuck it out. We stuck it out. We stayed true. We stayed the line. We was like, no, Hello Games will turn this around. They will deliver on their promise. They've delivered. They've delivered. They've delivered in freaking spades. Okay, Hello Games, I'm super thankful for everything that you've put in there. And the way that the game is now is far better than when it launched. Brilliant. Fantastic work. But the engine. The engine is still missing. The engine is still a Mini Cooper engine with a load of freaking fuzzy dice thrown in around the body to distract us from the fact that the engine is still not on par. Not on par. Okay, anyway, I've gone off a little bit on a rant. Now, I know this is a cup of tea with Captain Stephen. Cup of teas do sort of soothe the soul, especially of the captain. So I'm going to have a little sip of this and see if I feel a bit better. I'm going to be throwing on the expedition. I've just done phase two. I died in a freaking volcano. It was bloody funny. If you want to see that episode, it's up there. If you want to have a little bit of a laugh after this pretty serious rant, <laughs> check that video out. It might put a smile back on your face. But yeah, normally these cup of tea episodes, that's what they're all about. I'm just putting a smile on people's face at the start of the day. This one, I'm hoping it um, gives you something to debate about. I welcome open communication inside of my comments. If you see somebody saying something similar to what I'm saying, please don't jump on and attack them. They're probably a veteran player like me that are feeling a bit miffed about this update. Um, but if you want to sw jump in and put some positive comments in there about how you're a new player to No Man's Sky and you're loving it, please do that too, because that's going to lift spirits too. I welcome everything down there. I just don't want people to enter into flame wars and jump people on other people for their opinions everybody should be allowed their opinion so please please be respectful of other people's ideas and opinions because i know this is going to divide the community because these last two updates have done exactly that waypoint and this update i feel the community right now are going to be a little bit on the fence there's going to be people in the same camp as me and people in the other camp where they're jumping into no man's sky and finding this universe to be amazing yeah so there's there definitely is a divide going going on at the moment and it almost feels like the older community that have been longing for reason to jump in at end game loot mechanics end game mechanics reasons to explore and adventure forth and also multiplayer um i haven't seen whether multiplayer has been fixed as yet uh, hopefully the weekend mission testing on friday will put put answer to that hopefully we're going to have less bugs and less issues if that happens then heck yes because i'm hoping to do a review of this this is just my first impressions at the moment, people. This is my first impressions. Things may change as things go on and evolve. But um, the main thing of this, to take away from this, is I'm really concerned for Hello Games with Starfield on the horizon. And this year is going to be a big year for other procedural titles like Nightingale, that's coming out soon, and also Under a Rock is said to be coming out soon. Both of those are procedurally generated beautiful games that have already captivated my interest. And because I do love procedural generation, I honestly think that's the future of gaming and AI with procedural generation. It could take gaming to the next plateau. And I was hoping that Hello Games and No Man's Sky was the game that was going to evolve with that movement. 
But at the moment, it feels like the only thing that we've had procedurally generated added into the game of recent years has been Desolation, which I like the actual procedural generation of the dungeons in space, lovely. Would have liked to see more of that on the planets, perhaps with the Sentinel Strongholds rather than just a simple pillar. And um, also the procedural generation of settlements which sadly I still don't know from these patch notes whether Switch players have got settlements. But there we go, people in the view of us. I'm going to finish drinking this tea and hopefully we'll get some more questions over, the, I mean, more answers to questions over the weekend. I am hoping to do a podcast with Kurt, the maker of the No Man's Sky system app that has more eyes into the code and the back end of No Man's Sky than I could ever dream possible of knowing. So hopefully talking to Kurt on the Sunday might make me feel a little bit better about things. But right now I am in the state of being myth. I'm happy because I've got something to do in No Man's Sky with the expedition, but I honestly feel that this update was severely underwhelming for players like myself. And um, I'd imagine there's going to be two camps, as I say. And I'm repeating myself now, so I'm going to move on. Goodbye, people. Enjoy your day. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.